So next speaker is Dr. Siddharth Madan. He will be speaking on delayed onset endophthalmitis following succe successfully treated acute endophthalmitis post IVR in DN. Good evening all. After having this interesting discussion on endophthalmitis, I'll be presenting yet another case of delayed onset endophthalmitis following successfully treated acute endophthalmitis post IVR in diabetic macular edema. So this was a 60 years old lady who was a type 2 diabetic for 12 years on insulin and a hypertensive for 2 years. She presented with gradual painless progressive diminution of vision in both her eyes, right more than left for 6 months. She, ha she was both eyes pseudophagic. She had history of intravitreal ranibizumab injection in the left eye which she had taken one month back for PDR with DME. Her presenting visual acuity in the right eye was 6 by 36. She had mixed retinopathy with DME in the right eye which was confirmed angiographically and the patient received intravitreal ranibizumab injection in the right eye. On day one following the injection, the patient developed sudden uh, onset pain, redness and diminution on vision and she was diagnosed as a case of acute post-operative endophthalmitis. We administered her intravitreal antibiotics, vancomycin and septazidine when IV antibiotics were continued. On day two, as the patient was progressing, the patient underwent pars plana vitrectomy, AC type and vitreous biopsy were sent for culture and we performed a near total vitrectomy with a posterior hyaloid removal. The vitreous tap at this stage grew enterococcus fecalis, which was sensitive to septazidime and vancomycin and was resistant to cotrimoxazole. She was man managed conservatively topical steroids, subconjunctival vancomycin. The patient eventually developed inflammatory glaucoma. She was on IV manaton and oral diamox. And following this, the patient had electrolyte imbalance. She had to be in medicine ward for 18 days. However, she was discharged after a uh, gap of 18 days with a vi visual acuity of finger counting 3 meters. One month after discharge, we underwent, uh, went ahead with uh, PRP and the patient uh, was maintaining a visual acuity of finger counting 4 meters. To our surprise, the patient presented one month later with an, uh, another episode of pain, redness and diminution of vision in the same eye. Visual acuity was hand movement close to face and the IOP at presentation was 39 millimeters of mercury. Here we suspected it was a delayed post-operative endophthalmitis or an endogenous endophthalmitis. The etiology we thought could have been fungal or was it a remission of the previously existing enterococcus infection or was there uh, any underlying systemic source. So on the day of this presentation, we went ahead with intravitreal injection of vancomycin, septazidime and amphotericin B and the topical antibiotics and antifungal were continued on an early basis. The patient continued to deteriorate on day two. In the meantime, we uh, went ahead with her ultrasound abdomen, CCT chest, urine and blood, blood cultures, they all turned out to be negative. Her dental opinion was done which advised no active intervention. ENT and gynecology opinions were done as the patient had ear discharge and vaginal discharge. However, they were not contributory to the case. The patient was developing ep epithelial toxicity because of the early dosages of antibiotics and antifungals. So on third day of presentation, the patient underwent pars plana vitrectomy with PCI oil explantation and the capsular bag and aisle were sent for histopathology. On vitreous biopsy, we observed uh, gram-positive rods, which were nocardia positive. They were acid fast, however, though there was no evidence of fungus seen. To add to this, we un went ahead with PCR testing and it was confirmatory for nocardia. And the, this nocardia, which grew on culture, also was sensitive to linozolin and cotrimoxazole. The capsular bag showed fibrocollagenous tissue. CC, CECT and bronchoalveolar ravage were negative for nocardia. The patient was continued on linozolid oral and cotrimoxazole for four weeks and along with that 0.2% topical linozolid. The patient continued to improve. At one week, the uh, cornea cleared and at two weeks, at, the, at about 12 days, the patient was discharged. These are her follow-up OCTs at one month of follow-up. So intraocular nocardiosis, it's a very opportunistic infection. They are rare infections. They have extremely poor outcomes. The patient may need enucleation. However, the index of suspicion is very low, so it results in delay in diagnosis. The patients may present with orbital cellulitis or vitreous abscess, and these eyes require multiple surgical interventions. Predominantly, they have anterior chamber involvement, which is more than the vitreous involvement. Amikersen used to be the drug of choice, but now, because of the to toxicity, we have cheaper alternatives in the form of uh, uh, linozolid and cotrimaxol, which we administered in our patient. Gold standard is PCR. So therefore, uh, we, have, uh, we have to be wary of this uh, organism, which can result in presentations like this, and not all cases of delayed onset endophthalmitis, which require re retrectomy or fungal. So thank you. What is the 
time duration gap between first onset and second onset? So when first onset happened, two months after that, the patient presented with the episode of re-endophthalmitis. So you, may, you one mentioned month one month. Uh, no, that was yeah. after uh, the PRP. So I would say two months after the first presentation, the patient again developed endophthalmitis. So normally in OMI, I would not, you see, I would not, uh, you know, uh, say two diseases occurring. I would have suspected that ongoing only some lurking must have been there or inadequately treated previous because most of the endothelitis, we don't stop treatment after three, four weeks. They continue for longer, longer time. And, uh, you know, first, uh, first uh, dose was empero. Three minutes, yes. Which, uh, which uh, you know, may be a contaminant uh, somewhere. And most likely, we were dealing with notardia then and there only. Most likely, because you see, clinically, you should, uh, you know, never, never think of two kind of, uh, you know, one is acute. So it may look uh, very funny, but but uh, I would think that first enterofecalis was a contaminant, and we were dealing with nocardia, and uh, it got suppressed because of whatever, and then it cleared up very well. And nocardia, that you are right, linzolid is 600 milligram twice a day for a pretty long time is the answer. Uh, that it generally resolves very nicely with oral uh, linzolid. And gram-positive rod, uh, they so the only pointer was the culture. Actually, the culture never showed, and the gram stain never showed any acid fast organism. Yeah. So that was the only no, thing. I agree otherwise, because the we only some, some things, uh, either become wiser by the microbiological or become misled. But generally, clinical sense says that you know never suspect two kind of this thing in one. Clinical, as a clinician, I'm saying. But uh, but uh, you are right. Uh, you know whatever you have documented very well done, an excellent uh, excellent collection. I must say. After a very long time, I'm seeing the first presenter also and you also. Very good documentation of day-to-day uh, -day progress and what's happening. Must okay. compliment uh, very good presenter. Thank you, sir. Dr. Neha Sudhakar will present vitreous hemorrhage from an unknown cause. The other lesson to be learned is that intravitreal injections should not be taken so lightly. You see whether it is uh, ranimizubab or eccentrix or whatever should not be taken. And you see endophthalmitis because of uh, this intravitreal pharmacotherapy is 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 more malignant than uh, you know, see cater surgery also. Because we are giving the inoculum right into the culture medium, that is vitreous. Uh, 